Hi there. Thanks for joining us for Together. I'm Karen Lee. For the next 30 minutes, we're going to show you the best of our Together for Colorado stories. They're the stories about your friends and neighbors, the stories that lift us up, empower us, and help us remember how lucky we are to live here. So sit back, relax, and enjoy a show that you can watch with the entire family. A trip to football camp inspired one Aurora teen to come together for Colorado. The high school kicker is now on a mission to kick cancer, as Joel Hillen explains. Noah Karwaki has never met Nate Eckhoff, but the teen still made an impact in his life. He inspired me to keep going and kicking. Nate passed away from cancer six years ago. Now Noah is raising money in his honor. When I'm going up to kick, I'm just, I know I have to make it because every point matters. How you can help Noah reach his goal next on Together. Well, for many families, access to fresh, healthy food is not always a guarantee. And that's where the Denver Food Rescue steps in. The group teamed up with a local middle school to open a free grocery store for the community. Jamie Leary takes us there. Schools are usually bustling with activity, but every Thursday, Kip Middle School is especially busy. Ophelia and Maricela. The school transforms into a grocery store. Everything is free to families in need. It's a lot of food. It's organic. How this food giveaway is transforming the community. Bring a box or a bag and we'll be happy to service you. That's later on Together. Oh, many times coming together for Colorado is about working together to find solutions to tough problems facing our state. Affordable housing, definitely one of them. Sean Chitness shows us how a new clinic aims to help renters in need. Yeah. Jakeisha McLaren was so excited when she found a place to call home. Then the unexpected happened. I had just signed the lease. I'm thinking everything is going to be okay. And the next you know, um, I see and hear people screaming fire. Jakeisha made it out okay, but the fire made her realize something. I wasn't really aware of all my renters' rights. We'll take you to the new clinic that aims to change that. That's coming up on Together. Two nonprofits are coming together for Colorado mothers by helping them celebrate their success. The teen moms all completed programs through the Hope House and will be honored in an upcoming gala. Karen Morfitt and photojournalist Robert Gadecki were there as the young ladies got to pick out dresses for the big night. I'm not super into this uh, one shoulder. No, thing. one shoulder. Yeah. Three right. years ago, Dakota McGrath wasn't thinking about picking out the perfect dress. I dig it. Or finding the right shoes for the high school dance. If you can handle heels, then we're going to get you some heels. Instead, her life revolved around raising her little boy, PJ. He is the world's biggest goofball. I love He's such a funny kid. There were some nights where I was trying to get homework done and feeding my son and trying to eat myself. Unsure about her future, she turned to Hope House, an organization that provides resources for teen moms trying to make it on their own. You name it, whatever we can do to help them be self-sufficient. McGrath and more than a dozen other girls are this year's graduates of the program and being celebrated. We're looking for dresses for the gala. Hundreds of gowns were hanging, shoes lined up, and accessories on hand for them to choose from for their night at the group's annual fundraising event. All of it thanks to another nonprofit, Bella Boutique, who helps low income teens find the perfect outfit for that special occasion. And it's all donated um, from the community, from bridal shops, from other boutiques. While McGrath wasn't sure what exactly she was looking for when she started. This is like the winner. I mean, it's the best. She knew the right gown when she saw it. Ah, oh, you can't help but love those smiles on their faces, right? Karen Morfitt joins us now. And uh, so much fun for these young ladies. It's always fun to dress up, period. But um, for it to mean so much, too. Absolutely. And it was almost as much fun for me just to be able to watch them pick out a dress because there were so many donated dresses. We were just talking... You, you wear a dress once and then it doesn't get any more right. use. And so this was the perfect event for this, um, you know, the boutique that donated those dresses. They just get them from the community and they do this for proms. They do this for homecoming. So two nonprofits coming together to help these girls. Really amazing. Let's talk a little bit more about Hope House. Share more with us about what they do. Well, so Hope House actually, you know, it's not one of the uh, nonprofits that you hear of a lot of the time because uh, they're, they're just not... Uh, out there as much with their promotions, but they help teen moms who really 
just want to get back on track. Um, they offer graduation programs to help them get their diplomas. They offer programs that help them get into college and really get their life back on track. And then on top of that, just counseling and support for what sometimes can be a really difficult time because many of them are doing this all on their own. Yeah, certainly so. Yeah. And let's talk about the big gala. Can people still go? Can they donate? What can they do? Yeah, so it's a big fundraiser to help support these moms and on the resources that Hope House offers them. It's Saturday, November 3rd, starts at 530. It's at the Hilton downtown, and of course, tickets are still available. So if you want to, you know, be part of this and really support someone that's going through this, this is the perfect way to do it. And again, tickets are available, and we have all the information online at cbsdenver.com if you do want to go. Yeah, it's a beautiful story, and what a fabulous organization. Good for them. Really, really fun night. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate it. Well, a team that we have fe featured on our show, before continues her work battling Lyme disease. Remember Olivia Goodrow? Well, she was diagnosed at six years old. She started the Live Lyme Foundation and last month held the first ever Live Lyme Summit. The focus is on pushing research forward. We invited all these amazing doctors and scientists from all over the world. It's really just about spreading awareness and maybe sparking ideas. Now, besides starting the foundation, Olivia also helped develop the Tick Tracker app. It's a place where people can report tick sightings. For one high school football player in Arapahoe County, his games are not just about winning. For every field goal that he makes, Noah Karwaki is accepting donations. The money raised will support children fighting a tough disease. Joel Hillen and photojournalist Bill Mashore explain Noah's mission to kick cancer. I'm doing a fundraiser for cancer. It's called Kick It for Cancer. Vista Peak senior Noah Karwaki is raising money for childhood cancer, doing what he does best. Kicking. Watching Noah the last three, four years has been amazing. Marshall Eckhoff lost his son Nate to childhood cancer about six years ago when he was just about Noah's age. He loved the Lord. He loved kicking. He, he loved helping others kick. In his son's honor, Marshall holds an annual kicking camp to inspire the next generation of kickers including Noah. I was inspired by his story because he came from a soccer background like I did and he moved into football. Last Noah week, hopes to raise $5,000 this season in Nate's honor and that means every kick is high stakes. When I'm going up to kick, I'm just, I know I have to make it because every point matters. Every point is more money that could help forward childhood uh, research for cancer. It's just such an honor to know this young man. Marshall is grateful that Nate's legacy lives on through Noah, and Noah is grateful for the support he's received from Marshall. Thank you for what he's done for me and how he inspired me to keep going and kicking, helped me love the sport more. Way to go, young man. You know, you know, way to pay it forward, way to, way to show your character, way, way, to, way to add on, way to, way to, way to go. Yeah, way to go, Noah. Well, if you would like to donate to Noah's cause, we've put up a link for you. We're going to make it easy at CBSDenver.com. For kids battling serious illnesses, even the smallest thing seem like a really big deal. Take this field trip, for example. We're going to show you who is coming together to put these smiles on the faces of patients at Children's Hospital. Together with Karen Lee, sponsored by Canvas Credit Union. We're Canvas, and we've got you covered, Colorado. Go live. Amazon is coming together to make sure that kids battling cancer are getting out to enjoy some good old fun. Patients took a break from Children's Hospital to take a tour of Amazon's Fulfillment Center in Aurora. They also got to take part in a robotics camp. How much fun is that? It's a huge hit for these kids. They make, they're making science and math exciting for these kids. And like I said, many of them have had to miss school through their treatments. And so, you know, most kids aren't, a lot, some kids aren't excited to go to school, but these kids really are because they, they have missed so much of it. And who doesn't love robots? Well, during the event, Amazon also donated $10,000 to the Children's Hospital Colorado. Fantastic. Robots are like donuts. Everybody <laughs> yeah. loves them, right? Everybody likes them. Right? They're so <laughs> yeah. much fun. Dave Aguilera with us now. And we all want to talk a little bit about some of the photos that have been coming in. Perfect fall weather yeah. right now. Yeah, and we're going to bop all over the Eastern Plains and the Front mm -hmm. Range with this. Let's take you down to Otero County. Bent's Old Fort is down there, and that was built in 1833. Stu Jordan took a drive down there. And fall is a perfect time to go 
down there because it gets kind of hot in the summertime oh, down yeah. there in Otero mm -hmm. County. So that's in southeastern Colorado. So it's it's worth a day drive if you want to head down there. Susie Helmer and the kids were zip lining in Castle Rock. Don't have to drive too far to do that. That's always a, a fun time down there. Looks like they had a cloudy day for that one. And uh, one more for you, Lisa Miranda, who actually works at our assignment desk. Uh, shooting one of those half face selfies up yeah. there in uh, Rocky Mountain National Park. Looks like a cloudy day. Might have even pulled some rain out of that. So, uh, really nice shot there. Any one of those places, man, fall is the perfect time mm -hmm. to go and check those out. Yeah, any mm -hmm. day, right? Because any Colorado day. Yeah. So many fantastic places. There you go. We appreciate you sharing the photos sure. with us. And be sure to share your photos with us as well. We want to see you out enjoying Colorado with your family. And we know you take pictures with your pets, so send them in too. Send us an email at togetherforcolorado at cbs.com. You can also post it on social media using the hashtag for Colorado. And we will be sure to share it right here on this show. We're coming together to help those most in need. Employees of one company recently opened up a type of drive through grocery store in Denver. And their work is making a huge difference in the lives of thousands of people. Anything a family might need or enjoy. Turnout's been fantastic. Everybody's having a good time. On this week's Together for Colorado Calendar, Wednesday, it is the annual Take a Breath Luncheon, benefiting Mount St. Vincent. The nonprofit helps children and families facing trauma. Friday, get those costumes ready for the annual Scream Scram. The Halloween 5K is hosted by the Boys and Girls Clubs of Metro Denver. Then Sunday, you can help make dreams come true. The Walk for Wishes at Hudson Garden benefits the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Well, we've put more information on these events on the Together for Colorado page at cbsdenver.com. So many fun things to do. Well, a surprise for families in Denver recently, PepsiCo teamed up with a nonprofit Feed the Children to hand out 32,000 pounds of food and other goodies to those who could really use a little pick-me-up. Volunteers took over this intersection to hand out those care packages. They included things like pasta, peanut butter, shampoo, even some comic books were thrown in there. Families pulled up in their cars as teams loaded their vehicles with all those supplies. It helps because I have a lot of kids. <laughs> I only got three, but it's still a lot. I think it's lovely. It helps out the hood um, and the people in it. I think it's a pretty cool opportunity for, for everybody. PepsiCo aimed to help a total of 800 families with this giveaway in Denver. They say it's a new tradition that they plan on keeping around. Meanwhile, there is another group called the Denver Food Rescue. It's working to make sure that no one in the community goes hungry. They set up shop in a school every Thursday to give away free groceries. Jamie Leary and photojournalist Tom Myers take us to the giveaway at Kip Middle School. Ophelia and Maricela. Just two of the names on a pretty big list. There's over 25 families here, most with over five people in their households. A long list, but an average Thursday for the Kip Middle School in Northeast Denver. It's a big part of the school year, feeding the community. I think there's a lot of um, challenges that family face um, in providing a good education for their students that might not necessarily be related to academics. Organizing it keeps Gabriela Rodriguez busy. She is passionate but modest about her contribution. Not me, definitely Denver Food Rescue. It's where all of this food comes from. Where it goes is even better. I'm a grandparent of one of the students at Academy 360. Audrey Senor is packing up a truckload for Montbello families. The balance of nutrition is totally off, I think, for this neighborhood. Montbello, parts of Green Valley. Maro Gutierrez volunteers every Thursday here. She also gets to take food back to her family. It's a lot of food. It's organic and it's healthy. It's about, you know, food with dignity, you know, so the, this isn't like a handout. Audrey sums it up best. Bring a box or a bag and we'll be happy to service you. Ah, I just love that. Well, it's never too late to say thank you. One woman made sure that rescuers knew how much they mattered more than a year after they saved her life. Why, she's not the only one who's grateful. Catch the latest episodes of Together, as well as your favorite Together for Colorado stories anytime at cbsdenver.com. Coming together for Colorado often means looking at how to solve tough issues like the lack of affordable housing in our state. Luckily, there are groups coming together to help out, like a new legal aid clinic in Adams County. Sean Chitness explains how the nonprofit helps renters in need. 
I just stepped out of my apartment and I looked at the fire. I was amazed. Uh, this was my first fire, so I didn't know what to do. Jakeisha McLaren remembers clearly what it's like to see the place you live in go up in flames. I had just signed the lease. I'm thinking everything is going to be okay. And the next you know, um, I see and hear people screaming fire. At the time, she didn't know all of her options and rights as a renter. That's why the nonprofit, United for a New Economy, has asked local cities in Adams County to create a legal clinic. Most renters aren't aware of the legal options available to them, and we want to make sure that uh, legal literacy is available to all in our city. Working out of this library, it'll be a resource many families might not otherwise be able to afford. McLaren didn't have any choice but to stay in her apartment even after the fire. The cost to move was too much. The cost of rent has really gone up, and in some neighborhoods it's doubled in the past five years, and no one's income has doubled. She's excited to work with United for a New Economy so others don't face the challenges she does, still trying to get her apartment back to normal. Just be prepared for a fire um, because you don't know if your building's prepared for it or not. A price she hopes others won't have to pay. It'll mean a great deal. Hmm. Yeah, sure would. Special surprise for the crews at West Metro Fire. A woman they rescued more than a year ago traveled all the way from Germany to say thank you. Last April, Anna was hiking on North Table Mountain when a 1,500-pound boulder fell on her leg. You might remember this big day. We covered it all day. Crews had to use a hydraulic lift to get the boulder off of her. They then carried her 45 minutes to the top of that mountain where she was then airlifted to the hospital. Well, Anna now wears her prosthetic leg. She came back to Colorado not only to say thank you, but to let the crews know that she's doing great. She says she is already back to hiking and enjoying the outdoors once again. Congrats to her. Well, students in Cherry Creek schools are coming together to honor our veterans. Last month, the district hosted its annual Veterans and Active Military Appreciation football game. Current and former service members were invited to a pizza lunch before the Grandview Wolves took on Fountain Fort Carson at Legacy Stadium. This is the fifth year that this district has held this very special game. Well, our show would not be the same without you, our amazing viewers, and I love hearing from you. Elizabeth Evans sent me this note on Facebook. She says, Karen, I have enjoyed your show so much the last two weeks. Thanks. Thank you, Elizabeth, for watching, and we look forward to hearing from you again. I'd love to hear from all of you, so send me your feedback, your story ideas, and any pictures that you take of you out and about with your family or your pets. You can email me directly or post them to social media using the hashtag for Colorado. Well, thanks again for joining us on Together. I look forward to seeing you next week as we introduce you to more Coloradans who are coming together to make our community a better place. Until then, we give you a taste of the Caribbean. Photojournalist Robert Sanchez captured the talents of the Rocky Mountain Steel Band, who are joined by internationally known percussionist Jeff Nero.